Basically, the operation takes place in a dorsal position with both arms tucked in at the sides. The surgeon's positioning in between the legs has not proven to be beneficial in any case. After a lower midline laparotomy, three trocars are used on the right side and one on the left. The first camera trocar is placed subcostially in the anterior axillary line. An inversely arranged alignment is possible in the case of previous surgeries where a free upper quadrant on the left side might be expected. As a basic principle, the complete scar has to be covered with an all-side overlap of at least 5 centimeters. Six stay sutures are fixed in the midline and in the corners. The caudal stay suture is attached 4 to 5 centimeters away from the lower edge of the mesh in order to allow an overlap into the prevesical space. The lower corners can be rounded as needed. A mini laparotomy in the right or left lower abdomen is recommended as primary access after median and midline incisions of the upper abdomen. Again, three trocars are used on one side and a fourth on the contralateral side. The cranial midline stay suture should be attached four to five centimeters away from the upper edge of the mesh in order to get a far overlap beyond the costal arch. After establishing the pneumoperitoneum, the adhesiolysis is the most risky step of the procedure. The cranio called a division of adhesions is always easier than in the opposite direction and should be targeted in this mode. Basically, adhesions should be cut without coagulation, ultrasonic dissection, or other energy-based techniques. Electric devices contract the adhesions which cause thermal injuries which may in turn lead to secondary perforations. We would like to emphasize how great the risk of using energy-driven devices is for adhesiolysis. Only carbon dioxide infiltrates the adhesions when sharply dissected and enlarges the distance between adhesive structures and the abdominal wall. This effect facilitates the adhesiolysis tremendously. After incisions of the lower abdomen, the mesh has to be placed into the prevesical space. The peritoneum parietale, including the plicae medialis, is divided, thus opening the prevesical space. The bladder is dissected from the anterior abdominal wall, while the symphysis and the pubic bones are exposed. The ligamentum teres hepatis, or the falciform ligament, has to be divided in case of upper midline incisions in order to achieve a mesh placement cranial of the costal arch, which allows the adequate cranial overlap. Our routinely used mesh consists of polyvinyl iodine fluoride. The parietal side additionally contains a small amount of polypropylene in order to ensure adequate incorporation. The mesh features elasticity similar to the natural abdominal wall, being higher in the vertical than in the transverse direction. The green thread marks the parietal side and further shows the midline of the vertical axis of distinctive elasticity. In general, five more stay sutures are affixed, which later will be grasped transfascially and loosely tied, leaving the knots in the subcutaneous tissue. The second midline stay suture is attached four to five centimeters away from the edge in order to allow the overlap into the prevesical area or beyond the costal arch. Afterwards, the mesh is folded and brought into, or introduced into, the abdominal cavity. Folded meshes can be spread easier than rolled ones. Meshes of as much as 20 by 30 centimeters can be inserted through a 10 millimeter trocar, while larger ones require a 12 millimeter trocar. The mesh is placed into the afore open prevesical space with lower abdominal hernias so that the lower part of the mesh is placed extraperitoneally. The mesh can be placed between the liver and diaphragm in case of upper abdominal hernias with a far overlap beyond the costal arch. The limitation of overlap is given by the ligamenta triangularia dextra et sinistra. The marking and stay sutures are grasped through stab incisions and loosely tied into the subcutaneous tissue. The midline threads are grasped at first for ideal orientation of the mesh. Next, the sutures far away from the camera are fixed, followed by the sutures near to the camera. In reversed order, the mesh hangs down like a curtain in front of the camera, which would unnecessarily complicate grasping the sutures behind. <laughs>